Hello, this is Dean McDonald from Tech Skills. In this video, I will describe and demonstrate how to add a second IDE hard drive to a computer. Let's get started. Since I will be opening computer cases and removing components, I need to make sure I use some sort of anti-static protection. In this case, I'll use an anti-static wrist strap. Put that on my wrist to make sure that the wrist strap is tight. This is connected to an ESD mat. It also has a grounding wire that's connected to a grounded outlet. I've removed the side of the case to show you the inside of this computer. This computer currently has one IDE hard drive. This is connected to the primary IDE controller. It also has a single optical drive which is connected to the secondary IDE controller. I'm going to be adding a second IDE hard drive and I'm going to add it as a slave device to the primary controller. I will be removing the original hard drive so I can show you what the hard drive looks like and then also so we can reconfigure the jumpers. First I'll begin by removing the power lead, grip on to the Molex connector and then I pull it out of the device. Then I remove the ribbon cable, I grab the ribbon cable close to the connector and then pull straight out from the device. Each computer case manufacturer holds hard drives into the case differently. Some computer cases use a quick release rails. These will snap onto the hard drive so they slide into the case. Others will have a plastic or a metal removable cage that holds the hard drive in. This one happens to have a fixed cage. This is welded right to the case. And then it uses screws to hold the drive in place. I'll remove these screws so then I can slide the drive out of the case. With the screws removed, I can carefully move all the components out of the way and then slide the drive out of the case. Here's the IDE drive that I removed from the computer. Here we have the 4-pin Molex power connector. We have our 40-pin IDE controller. It has a keyed notch here so our data cable can only fit in one direction. And then our IDE device has jumper settings. Somewhere on the IDE drive there will be a legend or some indicators to indicate which jumper setting will specify the device as a slave or a master device or a cable select device. In this case if we remove all jumpers that would be a slave device. If we set the jumper to the far right that would be a master or single drive. Or if we set it on the third jumper that will indicate or enable the cable select feature. This device is going to be our master device. So we're going to set it as the far right jumper. So this white jumper right here is already in the proper location. So this device will be the master device. We're going to install this on the primary controller. This device is going to be our slave hard drive. We're going to add this to the primary controller. This device doesn't happen to have a legend on top, but if I turn it over, the bottom jumper settings are listed right on the board. So here we have CS. If we were going to have a cable select device, we would use the first jumper. If we were going to specify this, this as a slave device, we would use the second jumper. And then the master device would be the third jumper. In this case, this is going to be our slave device. We would move it over to the second jumper. So this device is now configured as our slave device. IDE devices support one of two settings. We can either set all devices as the master or slave device, or we can set both devices as cable select. If we use cable select technology, we're going to have to use a cable select supported cable. Here's a, an example of a cable select supported cable. A couple of items on a cable select cable. One of them will have a little notch out of it. So in this case, we have one of the wires has been punched out. We also have markers on the connectors to indicate which connector goes to which device. In this case, this one says sys board. So this goes plugs into the motherboard. The connector at the end of this cable supports drive zero, so we would put our drive zero or our master device on the end of the cable. And then drive one or our slave device would go on the center connector. So if we're using cable select, we have to use a cable select cable. Some IDE cables like this one are what are called 40 wire cables. So there's 40 wires and a 40 pin connector. These are used for optical drives and legacy hard drives that only support ATA33 or less speeds. Newer drives, drives that are ATA66, 100, or 133, need to use an 80-wire cable. These still have a 40-pin connector, 
but they have twice as many wires to support faster speeds. You can use a 40 pin cable with an ATA66100 or 133 device, but it won't run at the fastest speed. So it's recommended to use these cables, the 40 wire cables, only for optical drives and the 80 wire cable for any newer hard drives. Remove the ribbon cables from the motherboard so we can get a good look at them. Under each of these IDE controllers we can see that this one says primary and this one says secondary. So we're going to connect our master and slave hard drives to the primary controller and then our single optical drive will be on its own cable connected to the secondary controller. Whenever possible you should separate hard drives and optical drives on separate controllers. In this case we're going to put our hard drives on the primary controller and our optical drive on the secondary controller. You should also put your bootable drive that holds the operating system, you should configure that as the master device on the primary chain and then any other hard drives or secondary hard drives should be configured as the slave device on the primary chain. Currently our single optical drive is connected to the secondary controller. This cable is connected to our primary controller. This is what will attach our master and our slave hard drive. This is going to be our master device. We've got the jumper set correctly, so this is the master. Carefully insert this into the computer case. And then install the case screws to hold it in place. Installed and fastened the case screws. Now I can connect the data ribbon cable. Generally you want the master device hooked to the end connector on the ribbon cable. This is our master device, so I'll connect the ribbon cable. And then at this time I can also connect the power connector. Now I can install our slave device. This is our slave device. We've got the jumper settings set as slave. So I can carefully slide this into the computer case and then fasten the case screws. The hard drive screws are fastened. Now I can connect the secondary connector to our slave device. And then the second power connector. Here's a close up to our setup. Here's our master device connected to the end of the cable. We have power connected. And then the secondary connector is connected to our slave device. This one also has power and this cable is connected to our primary controller. With the hard drives installed I can connect my monitor, keyboard, and mouse, power up the computer and make sure that both drives are detected. Press the power button and boot the computer. As it boots I can look at the BIOS splash screen see if there's any indication that it found any devices. Press the pause break key to pause it. Here it indicates that it found a primary master device, it also found a primary slave device, and then a secondary master device. It's the delete key to enter the CMOS setup utility. Then I'll go into the standard CMOS features, and here we can see our current IDE setup. You can see our primary master device was auto detected. It's a 40,000 megabyte or a 40 gig drive. Our primary slave device was auto detected. It's a 19,996 megabyte or a 20 gigabyte hard drive. And then our IDE secondary master is an MSI CDRW. That's our optical drive. Looking at both the BIOS and the CMOS, it appears that the jumpers were set correctly and all devices were properly identified. So from here, we could save our settings. The computer would restart and then we could go into whatever operating system we're using and now we would partition and format our hard drive to be able to use it. In this video I described and demonstrated how to add a second IDE hard drive to a computer. I hope this is helpful to show you some of the things that you need to know to be able to complete this task on your own. Good luck practicing and thanks for watching.